Jesus said Jesus bled and you know the number seven is completion. So Jesus had put it all together that we would have a right to the tree of life. So this is an exciting time. Glory be to God. So we greet you in the powerful and the matchless and the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus and in whom we live and in whom we live and we are have our being is the cause of God. And because he sent his son, Jesus, into this world. And that's why we're excited tonight. Because we realize that those seven places that he bled meant so much. Glory to God. And we have a right to the tree of life. So excitement is in the air. Glory to God. We want you to sit back with anticipation. And just with, a, a, with, the, with a prayerful heart. To say, Lord, have your way. Send your word. Make preaching easy. And let the Lord have his way. So I greet you. Glory to God in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want you to sit back and enjoy yourself. Whatever medium, whatever social media platform that you have on tonight, just know that God is there and that God is going to bless you through the word of God. So be, be excited. Just be excited. Glory to God. Let's get ready for hear the word of God. Glory to God. And I greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> No. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the greetings, the welcome uh, from Sister Saunders and the welcome and the greetings from our First Lady, Dr. Chris Cord. And I thank God for both of you. We're in for a treat tonight. I tell you, we have quite a line up. We're going to get right into it. We're going to start off tonight with a special treat. We have with us tonight, Chair Lady Lisa Brown, all the way from Connecticut, who's gonna come <laughs> forth with her own anoint, with her anointed self, and she's gonna give us a song. So come forth at this time, Chair Lady Brown. God bless you, everyone, and honor to all of you in your respective places. Uh, Y'all pray for me as I endeavor to sing a little bit. <laughs> I feel led on tonight, Pat, Dr. Corden. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of love. Sinners was slain, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the okay. old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I'm gonna sing the first verse again. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. 
So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I uh, will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I uh, will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Hallelujah. Say yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, oh yes, yes, yes. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, that's a good place to praise them right Hallelujah. Thank we you, give you the glory, yes. we give you honor, and thank we give you praise. Hallelujah. Give we praise. thank you, Jesus. Praise. Oh, God. Thank There's you. no thank way you can you. hear a song about the old rugged cross yes. and stay quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory thank to you, God. God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to move forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I'm moving forward. We're moving on. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, praise Jesus. the first lady. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. You're worthy to be glory, praised. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. All the praise. Glory to God. All the glory Jesus. and all the honor. All the glory all the and honor belongs to you, God. Belong to you, God. God. Bless your name. Glory be to your name. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. At Amen. this time, I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker of the night. I have the honor and the pleasure to bring forth, to introduce to some and present to others, my <laughs> husband, my honey, youth Good. pastor, Gary Corden, the junior. He's yeah. going to come forth <laughs> in his own way, and he's going to tell us about that first place that Jesus bled. It is in your hands, Minister Corden. Amen. Truly, we thank God for you on today. Amen. We give you all the glory and all the praise because it is due unto you, Father, and we just give you the glory. Amen. Amen. I want you, each and every one of you right now, just to bow your heads and say a quick prayer for me. <laughs> Amen. That the Lord will use me as his vessel. I'm going to tell you, I've been agonizing over this thing all day long. My stomach was nervous. Amen. I felt like I'm preaching in front of the, the holy convocation right now. And to the, but I'm going to tell you what, every time you stand behind this pulpit, I know I've said it a million times that it never gets any easier because you know that the weight of the word is on your shoulders. Amen. And you never want to steer the people wrong. So any, anybody who endeavors to be a member of the cloth, to stand up in the pulpit, just know that that eternal weight of glory lies on you too because God is going to hold you doubly responsible if you're not responsible with his word. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about today the seven places where Jesus bled, and mine is the forehead bleeding. Amen. Amen. And if I was to, and this is coming from Luke, 
the 22nd chapter, verses 40 through 44. Amen. And we're going to read it right quick. All right. If you have your Bibles, you could turn with me. If not, just stay tuned. And it says, and when he was at that place, he said unto them, pray ye, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and knelt down to knelt down and prayed saying, father, if it be thou, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And Father, we thank you for the reading of your word on today. Amen. If I was to take a subtopic on today, it would be make it happen. What are you going to do? Amen. 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 Let's to, to set a little bit of background here. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you one question before I get started. It says, who are you when things get hard? Right. Who are you when your back is against the wall? Who are you when you call to the table and you have to show and prove? Mm. Who are you? Right now, we see Jesus here at the Passover. He's in a pretty precarious situation as compared to most people at this time. He has so much going on with him right now that anybody would understand that if at right now he wanted to quit. How many of us have ever been in places where we know that we had something to do? We know that God called us to do something. We put ourselves out there. We made promises. We put our word out there. But then situations come along and things get hard. Things get difficult. And then we make excuses. Mm. Who are you when things get difficult? Here we find Jesus at the Passover once again. We see him in this situation where right now all the church folk hate him. All the church folk want to want to see him see him dead. One of his very own has but conspired against him to betray him. Ah, man, that's enough right there. When people from your inner circle <laughs> mean to do you harm, but we're not going to go there. That's a whole nother message. And then on top of all that, this is for you. This is for you, people of the cloth. You still have, in the middle of all everything that you're going through, you still have to provide a safe place for those that God have given you charge over. So in the middle of the Passover, he still has to find a place for his disciples to observe Passover. In the middle of this, things really start to get hard because he realized that that his um, that one his very own was going to betray him, and then on top of this, his disciples began to bicker at then about which one of us is going to be the greatest in the kingdom. Mm. <laughs> Amen. How how many of you can attest to this? That it seems like when when you're at your stress level, when things are starting to get hard, that even your very children, even though they're not necessarily talking to you, they want to act up in the background mm -hmm. and things and those situations that are around you want to stir themselves up. And it seems like everything is there to distract your attention. And on top of the disciples bickering, here come Peter, which is one of my favorite people from the Bible, as normal, talking too much. <laughs> Amen. Peter tells Jesus, he says, Peter says, Peter says, I'm going to rock with you for always. Is nothing ever going to come around that's going to make me leave your side. And Jesus has to correct them because Jesus already knows what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. He says, before this night is over with, you even you're going to deny me three times. And then on top of all of this, on top of his disciples bickering, on top of the church people warning them dead, on top of him having to still be a leader, still be the head of his spiritual household, on top of him still having to do everything else he had to do, he knew 
what was about to happen. He knew that tonight, that in the garden, he was going to be betrayed with a kiss. So I'm telling you tonight, who are you when things get hard? So we find ourselves right here in verse 40. And we find him at the Mount of Olives at the place where he knew that he was going to be betrayed. And when he was at this place, he said unto them, pray ye that, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And then he went away for a second, a little way, and he knelt down to pray. And he said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now, we've heard Pastor Corden speak and expound on this so many times and let us know that he said, nevertheless, and to which I also say, always the greater. Amen. So when your back is against the wall, when things seem to be coming at you, when things seem to not be going the way you want it to go, tell me, are you going to fold? Because Jesus here gives us the perfect example that says always the greater. Jesus gives us the perfect example that says, even though I know things are going to get hard, that even though I know that things may not be ideal, even though I can see all around me that the whole world seems to be conspiring against me, what am I going to do now that my back is against the wall? Now, we all know from our teachings that Jesus, even though he expressed a choice, we know that there was never a choice that he came to do something. And because of who he is, he is a man of integrity. He is a man that stands by his word. And because he stood by his word, we can trust him. Yes. Right now, we can, we, even if we go to Hebrews, Hebrews 12, that says, I'm looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. And because he went through it, he now sat down at the right hand of God. And I'm telling you right now, for those of us who endure, for those of us who make it, for those of who, who stand by our word, for those that Jesus can count on, for those that our family can count on, for those that we know that when we say it, we mean it, that our yes is yes, and that our no is no, that those that can endure, even though things get hard, those of us that make it, even though things, even those those of us that in in prop, no, excuse me, that in Psalms fifteen and four, where the where the psalmist asks, "Who's going to abide in the holy hill?" Mm. And one of the requirements that he says, "Those who swear to their own hurt and change not." Those who, even though I made a promise and things look hard, those that I made a promise, even though I might not be able to pay all my bills, but because I borrowed some money from you. Amen. And you, I know that you need it. Then I give you your money back. Even though it hurts me, I still stand by my word. Those of us who, who even though we know we, we've always coined this phrase, robbing Peter to pay Paul. But those of us who pay Peter and Paul. Amen. 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 Those of us, because I look, I, look, this is hurting me too. Ouch. I'm, I'm balling up my toes too, because the Lord is getting me too. Those who swear to our own hurt. Yes. And change not. Amen. Amen. Those shall re receive the crown of life. And I'm telling you what, those of us who endure, even though it may seem hard, those of us who endure and push through, even though it's difficult, those of us, despite all of our circumstances, still stand by our word. God says, I got you. Because in the very next verse, it said, there appeared an angel unto him from heaven to strengthen him. Those of us who know that God said, pay your tithes. Mm. Those of us who we know that God told us, told us to tithe. Those of us who know that we are supposed to do what we're supposed to do in church, even though we, I didn't go to bed early enough, so it's late, so I think I'll sleep in. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Those of us who said, who said, uh, um, 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 I, I, um, I, I would, I would give in the sacrificial offering. I would 
commit to my obligation to the church, even though I pledge this money and I pledge this gift to the church. But right now, Macy's is having that once a year sale and it only comes around once a year. Yes. I can pay it. I can pay it. I can pay it next time. Those of us who endure, even though it may seem, even though it may seem hard, God says, I got you. Yes. God says, I'm with you. Yes. And if you do, and if you commit your way unto me, I'm going to strengthen you. Amen. Amen. And just because he, he strengthens you for what's about to come next. And even those of us who, who push through the heart, even though those of us who push through the pain, we know that it still gets hard. And sometimes we got to go down on our knees. And some of the, us have to still press through the press. Amen. And we know that God has still got us. Yes. And because Jesus bled right here. Mm. And every time I think that I'm about to default on a promise. Every time I think that I'm about to go back on my word. Every time I think that Jesus, that even, even I'll switch this up, even, even those times where I think, wonder, God, do you really have me like you say you do? I think about where he bled from his forehead. Mm. And Amen. despite him having all of this opposition against him, he said, oh, wow. he the has great. Now, my question to you is, what are you going to do? Amen. It's Amen. in your hand. Amen. Amen. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Amen. 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 Thank God for that word, Minister Corden. Let's Amen. give them a hand clap of praise right now. Let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Right where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the word. He asked us, what are you going to do? Amen. Thank God for the word. Amen. At this time, thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise them, honey. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank At you, this Lord. time, we're gonna bring for ask uh Elder Spivey to prepare to come forth with our ministry of giving. But before we do, we just want to remind you to please make sure that your line is muted. There was a lot of background noise while Minister Corden was speaking. Um, and I could not pinpoint where it was coming from, but there's a lot of talking and moving around. Please ensure that your lines are muted um, to, so we will have no distractions. It is very distracting. It may not seem loud to you, but it's very distracting across the, the airways. Amen. And at this time, it is in your hands, Assistant Pastor Bernard Spivey. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. I thank God. Praise God for youth pastor. Praise God for the word. Praise God. He gave us. Praise God. What are you going to do? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. When you are under pressure, praise God. Because believe me, if you live long enough, it's going to happen to you. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and your reaction is going to determine who you are and where you are. But I thank God. Praise God. I come in for you on tonight. Praise God. To receive. Praise God. The gift, gift offering, amen. Praise God. And, and we can uh, use our, you can send it to our cash out, dollar sign, VT, C O G I C. And always to our post office, P.O. Box 514, one's in North Carolina, 27982. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And Let's give praise God on tonight, praise God, as unto the Lord, amen, praise God, because, amen, praise God, we are in a remodeling mode, praise God, and we need your financial help on tonight, amen, let's give heartily, amen, God bless. Amen, you got this song. You got this And then please bear with us for just one moment. We are trying to pinpoint this background noise. Please give us a second. 
But while we do it with your phones muted, just praise them in your home. Amen. Praise them in your home. Let's rebuke these distractions. All, everything that's coming to get in our way to distract us, to take our eyes off the word tonight, off of Jesus, off of the purpose tonight. Let's bind those distractions and those spirits right now in the name of Jesus. So just in your homes, do that for us. Praise the Lord. Bind the distractions Amen. right now while we work to find to, to resolve this issue. Amen. 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 We're just going to go forth in the strength of the Lord because the enemy will get no glory in this service tonight. Amen. Amen. And, and, and on that note, why don't you go ahead and unmute your lines and just for three seconds in the words of Evangelist Outlaw, let's give the Lord a praise. Let's step on the enemy's head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we'll move in this direction tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Lady, you are alive. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Going to get you to go ahead and mute your lines back at this time as we prepare for our next speaker. And our next speaker is coming at this time in the form of evangelist Lynette Swain. She is an anointed woman of God, and I know she has a word from on high for us tonight. It is in your hands, evangelist Swain. Let's do that. What was on my arm? Mm. Oh, well, you are alive. Hallelujah. Is Evangelist Swain with us? We have muted everybody, and so she's going to have to unmute herself. Evangelist Swain, hit star six to unmute yourself. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. It's in your hands. Praise the All yes. right. Praise the Lord. We are moving forward. I thank God, as I said, the house has been addressed, and I thank God for the powerful word from Minister According and in keeping with the flow of that anointing of that preached word, what are you going to do? Let us continue in our scripture. I ask God now that you would word my mouth and cleanse my heart. I want to talk to you tonight concerning the whipping post. And you'll find me in two scriptures, John 19, verse 1, and then we will conclude in Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 5. The whipping post in John, John 19 and 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. 
or had him flogged. Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea by way of Jerusalem. He ruled under a Roman government, but not very impressively. He was often criticized for not being able to keep peace in his section of town. Certainly the timing of all this was not in his favor. Mass people had gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover and their pilot was just wanting Jesus' case to be gone and done away with. There he sat trying to make an almost impossible decision. So the Jews had presented Jesus to Pilate to do their dirty work. We want him killed, but only you have the authority to do it. Pilate then questioned Jesus and, and asked him, what have you done that they want you killed? Jesus, however, as we know, remained silent. He said nothing because he had done nothing. After several attempts, Pilate still tried to condemn an innocent man, but found no fault in him at all. Pilate then goes back to the crowd and asks them again, well, what has he done? Because I can find, hallelujah, no fault in it. They, well, they said to him, well, he made himself the son of God. And by our law, you know, this means he ought to die. This is blasphemy. Pilate torn, trying to make a decision. He goes for a final attempt and asks Jesus again, well, who are you and where did you come from? Jesus then refusing to answer Pilate. Pilate asked him, do you not know who you're not talking to? The power that I have can either crucify you or release you. Jesus then lifted his head humbly and answered Pilate and let him know, you have no power against me. Only that that's been given to you from above. God had it all planned. God even had Pilate arranged and put in place to send Jesus to the cross. Pilate then with no other choice, he releases Jesus to the crowd. After asking them, he actually gave them a choice. Who would you have me to release unto you? It's custom that I give you a prisoner. Who would you ask? Who would you have me release? The king of the Jews or Barabbas? The crowd then to, began to cry, give us Barabbas. Barabbas, who was a robber, a murderer, they asked for a Barabbas. That was the same Barabbas who were actually in prison for the very thing that Jesus was being accused of. Barabbas was actually guilty of it. Barabbas was in jail because he had cited riots against the Roman government. He had committed treason. He had murdered insurrection. All of the things that we see now in 2021, don't you remember those words? There really is nothing new under the sun. So here we find Jesus standing here before Pilate. After much deliberation, he finally excuses himself and gives Jesus over to the crowd. And just as our, our beloved pastor would say so many times, I'll give you this one for free. It was actually in the background. I thought it was ironic that Barabbas himself was accused of ha actually done these things that Jesus was accused of, but also Barabbas' name itself meant son of the father. Isn't that ironic? They called him son of the father because they didn't actually know who Barabbas' father was, so they couldn't call him son of David or son of John, so they just called him the son of his father. And Jesus really was the son of his father. Glory be to God. God's plans always come together. And so now we are in prophet Isaiah's predictions. In Isaiah 53, verse 1 through 5, the prophet Isaiah had spoken this generations before. He let us know what had just transpired, that it was coming on the scene. Prophet Isaiah told the story of what would occur. He told of the coming of our Lord, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. His predictions of his coming were so astounding. They were so hard to grasp and imagine until the prophet started by saying, therefore, he began his saying, who have believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The coming of the Messiah, it won't, he won't be easily recognized, but rather a tender root out of dry ground. 
In other words, he's going to come suddenly. He's going to appear seemingly out of nowhere through the birth of a virgin. He'll burst onto the scene, not commonly or fancy, not wearing rich clothes, fine attire. He won't come as a king according to worldly standards, but rather a suffering servant, not surrounded by friends and loved ones, people honoring and celebrating him. No, just the opposite. He was despised, hallelujah, rejected, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He felt that, hallelujah. He experienced it. So if you're wondering, does anybody know how you feel? If you're wondering, does anybody know what you're going through? Jesus does because Jesus did. He did our bidding for us. The scripture says the prophet went on to say, we hid our faces from him. They were embarrassed by him, didn't want to call him king. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Nobody spoke up for him. Nobody came, hallelujah, to his rescue. Nobody came to his defense. Glory be to God. The prophet went on to say, surely, Without any doubt in my mind, he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. He bore them, in other words. He bared them for us in his own body. He felt what we feel, carried it. So now we don't have to be overtaken. We can get through hurt, loss, sadness. We're able to go to the other side because the punishment that we would have received would have been too much for us to bear. So Jesus bared it in our state. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Yes, God sent him for that purpose, for that hour. He came because God sent him, but he stayed because he loved us. Glory be to God. He was wounded for our transgression. He was made common, broken, violently abused. Wounded has the meaning here to desecrate the very holy thing. He took it all upon himself just for my transgressions, for your transgressions, for your offenses, for my rebellion, willfully straying away from the law of God. It all was covered under the wounds. It was all covered under the blood from his wounds. He was bruised for our iniquity, cast down, broken into pieces. Hallelujah. He was crushed. He literally came apart. With every lash, his flesh was ripped out. He came apart, hallelujah, so I could keep it together. He was broken and made whole again. His My iniquities were given up because he was broken. We couldn't help but sin. We were wrapped in it from birth, but his blood brought us victory over sin. Glory be to God. I feel revival in my soul, chastisement of our peace. It laid upon him. He took the punishment for us and gave us his peace. We no longer have to wait for the ax to drop. We're no longer looking over our shoulders, waiting for the punishment to begin. You remember when you were little as children, when mom would promise that she was going to get you all day long. You could barely play outside. You had no peace because you didn't know when mom was going to get you. Sometimes it was late at night and he, she'd show up and throw back the covers. It was chastisement time. Well, we don't have to wait because Jesus have already took the chastisement. He took the punishment away. Therefore, now there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, who no longer walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Glory be to God. With his stripes, we are healed. At the whipping post, every time that Roman soldier struck his back, sickness, disease fell to the ground. Poverty and lack fell to the ground. See, it wasn't just for our physical healing, but it came to make us whole. Body, mind, spirit, he made us whole. So I can't tell you how many. I can't tell you how many strikes. I don't know. Paul's account was 39. Paul's account was four to save one. But Paul was flogged and beaten by Jewish custom. We don't know what the Romans had in mind. So I can't tell you for sure whether it was 40 strikes or less. They knew that 40 strikes would kill a man. So they had to at least do it less than that. But we don't know their intentions were not to kill him by flogging. He had to be hung on a tree. 
for my sins and for yours. He had to be crucified. So I don't know how many stripes. Theologians are still debating over that. And I'm not in that discussion. So I may not know how many, but I do know how much. I know how much each strike was worth. I know how much each strike meant for my healing, the deliverance of my soul, the freeing of our minds. Every time they struck him, cancer fell to the ground. Every time they struck him, diabetes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, kidney failure, it all fell to the ground. Sinus and arthritis, depression and anxiety, mental disease, it all fell beneath his feet. Every strike he took brought it down and cast it under his feet. Mind you, now every time they struck him with that whip, made of bone and metal, it flipped and tore his flesh. So now you have his flesh laying on top of these diseases. And then it's been sprinkled, hallelujah, glory be to God, with his blood. So everything that you deal with now, every condition in your body that you deal with, it's been covered and sprinkled by the blood of Jesus from the stripes that he bears at the whipping post. Glory, hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad about it, hallelujah. I'm healed today because of the blood of the Lamb. And I praise God, I'll cling to that old rugged cross. Because of the blood that he shed for me. I'm finished out the valley. But whatever you're dealing with, glory be to God. I want you to know tonight, and Minister Corden can attest to this, there are millions and millions of apps. Anything you want to do, learn, cook, sew, whatever you want to do, there's an app for that. But I want to leave you tonight and let you know whatever you're dealing with in your body, there is a strike for that. It was at the whipping post. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. She said instead of a, there's an app for that, there is a strike for that. Hallelujah. Whatever your that is, there was a strike for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was our last speaker. So go ahead and unmute your lines. Oh, God. I hear the praises going forward. Don't let them hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
thank God. And, and I tell you, uh, chair lady, uh, you you almost didn't want us to go <laughs> any further tonight because I tell you, when she finished with her old rugged cross, yes, all we needed was some space. Probably didn't need much music, but I tell you, we have been in church. We have been going on uh, the Victory Temple style. And y'all know how we do. You know how we flow. Thank God yes. for that powerful uh, shermanic solo. Yes. Oh, you can sing for us anytime. Mm -hmm. And uh, Evangelist Swain, you just, uh, oh, my God, you. Uh, you were preaching to the world. Yes. You, you were trying, you were doing it. You were doing it. Thank God. Amen. Uh, you had it laid out. Uh, tell you the, yes. the, the preparation, the everything that was in that. It was so good. So many memorable pieces. I got I gotta go back and listen to y'all again. We just thank God, thank God for that word. That, thank God I for hear the word. someone talking in the background. Uh, Who? Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, everybody, we cannot pinpoint it. Uh, but the devil is a liar. Yes. We thank God. It just gives us more to pray for. Yes, it each does. Of you praying. God is hearing and answering prayer. Yes. But evangelist, thank you for that word. Amen. All of it was good and all of it was great. The whipping, oh my God, the, you just broke that down for yes. us at the whipping post. You just broke that down for us, uh, lick yes. by lick. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Then you just put it on the end that there was a strike. Like a strike for every ailment I had. Hallelujah. That was a strike. Yes. So the next time I'm looking at the apps on my phone. Hallelujah. I'm going to think about the stripes that Jesus took for my illness. Yes. God bless. I could go on and on, but thank you, thank all you Lord. so much for being on tonight. Uh, let's invite someone back one yes. tomorrow. Uh, Let's this thing keep on going. I am, uh, oh my God, this is going to be good. You know, what's good about this is we can turn right around Hallelujah. and listen to it again. Again, amen. <laughs> I share it with someone, tell them to be back on tomorrow night. Uh, do I have the last, I have the last word? Yes, sir. In addition. And Father, we thank you now for the preaching mm -hmm. of the blood. Mm -hmm. This man and this woman have shared with us what the blood did, what the blood, what does, the blood does, and what the blood yeah. will do. Yes, sir. And for every man and for every woman who has a need tonight, physical, spiritual, uh, touch them now. Cover them Cover with them your God. blood. And for that man and woman that are out of the ark of safety, the blood is still Feel saved. Faith. Pray in your heart. I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I've done wrong. But now I confess you, Jesus. I ask you to come into my life. I understand what you will do and what you are doing in the lives of Christians. Yes, Lord. In the lives yes, of Lord. saints. Yes, Lord. Have your way in my Have heart right now and save me. Save me, God. I accept you now in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. For those of you that accepted Jesus for the first time, get in contact with us. Yes. And even make sure that you'll be back tomorrow night. Yes. We want to help you to have the victory in Jesus. Yes. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it may He rest, rule, mm. and abide with us now and forever. forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, y'all. Have you. a wonderful night. In the yes, world. and we love you to life. Good night. God.